presentation theater gotcha. piece. Some people might be wondering. <laughs> I know it. And again, that phone number is 888-909-1050. Uh, call in if you'd like some free tickets. You heard Bud Forrest, the creator and the producer, talking about this fantastic, fantastic... I, I, I'm going to tell you. You're having problems today, right? Yeah, it's, it's just one of those days. Uh, fantastic uh, shows that you do not want to miss with that good big band era, all the music, the dancing, and, and the costumes, and the lighting, and it's absolutely fabulous. So if you would like to see what Bud Forrest does and all of his crew, uh, call in again at 888-909-1050. Okay, Bud, well, thank you so much for your time. We will see you on February 6th right here at the California Theater of Performing Arts. And you be safe, and thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for having me. Take care, and hopefully you, uh, both of you can come and see the show. And I'd like to say hello and thank you in person. I thank definitely, you so much for your support. You're welcome, and I will definitely be there. Okay, well, you take care. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Now, that's cool, isn't it? That, that sounds like that's going to be an amazing show. That would be cool. Yes. And everybody loves that type of music. Well, how, how can you, know? you not enjoy big band music? I mean, that's classic American history. Mm-hmm. That, that's just, that is cool music. And it and, and never goes out of style. Oh, isn't that the truth? Y- you know, and when you look at it now, even our young children, with all the genres that they listen to, you're seeing now more and more of the young people are going back to this. Well, and how, how much of our current music comes from big band or swing or the, the flappers? We, we, you know, they, modern artists have taken that and used it for modern music now. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just such a good music. I don't, yeah, yeah, a good feeling music. And like you said, it sounds like it'd be an amazing show even to show your kids. Yes. And it gets your feet happy and your whole body gets there happy. You and you know, and if we can make I think you're gonna be dancing in the aisles when you go there, aren't you? Yes. And if we can make this whole world happy with this performance, then there you go, there you go right? And again, thank you to Bud Forrest. <laughs> Bev doesn't need a dance for, floor. <laughs> for um you know, his wonders his ideas how he got this all together being the creator and the producer and again one more time the phone line is 888-909-1050 if you all want to come and see this fantastic performance call us talk to joe we will get all your info bada bing bada boom you get tickets to go and they're moving out the door pretty fast so if you want them you gotta call okay now you, sir, Mr. Fireman, Zach, our fireman, is up. And I'm so glad you're back in the station for we could do part two. Hey, I was more than happy to come back. I had a blast last week. And it's always it's always fun just to get a chance to share with people and say, hey, let's take a few minutes and get you ready and give you some good information that will help you out. It's a fun way to do it. And what a fun way it is, huh? Yes, it is. Yes, and it doesn't have to be so gloomy and scary as some people make it. And uh, Zach and I were talking for a few minutes before we came into the booth, and we decided we're going to finish up a little bit more on the fire and then get right back into the earthquake again. Sounds good to me. Okay. And if I remember correctly, if I'm wrong, apologize. Uh, when last time, right at the end with the fires, we were talking about the big animals, the horses and mm-hmm. the cows and, and all of that. That's where we left off. The the big thing, especially if you, if you look at our county, you go up into uh, parts like Arrowhead, Big Bear, or you get out into, say, parts of Ukaipa, uh, South Desert through uh, Pioneer Town, 29 Palms, Yucca Valley, or even up through uh, Oak Hills, Lucerne Valley. We have a lot of people that have small ranches or farms, uh, everything from horses, llamas, cattle, or, for example, we always joke about from the 03 fires, the exotic animal sanctuary up in Big Bear. It's the first time in our county we ever had to evacuate literally lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And, and there, our, our poor animal control guy's like, uh, how do we do this? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> exactly. You do, you do not want to upset the 700-pound lion while you're moving him out of his cage. Mm-hmm. But what we, what we want to stress to folks, if you have, particularly if you have horses, you need to have a way to get them out. There, there are several uh, volunteer groups in the United States that will come in and help you evacuate your animals. Um, our animal control department will help you. They will work with you to get your animals out. 
But if if you own horses or llamas or anything, you you need to have a horse trailer. Mm -hmm. You need to have a transport. You need to have a plan of not only can I put my animals on a trailer and move them out, where do I take them? One thing we've seen done is a lot of people, they will make, uh, they'll make an agreement with a local equestrian center. Or they'll get to know ranchers or farmers from another part of the uh, part of the area and say, hey, if I have to evacuate, can I move my animals to your to your ranch, to your farm, mm -hmm. to try to help make sure that they've got some place to take them? If you can't, we talked about last week our shock or our shelter operations compound, our mass care plan for the county. We've included in that several sites in the county where we can take large animals. And as we sort of evacuations, we'll tell you, hey, if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have, for example, up in the high desert, hey, I have 20 horses I need to evacuate, we'll tell you, okay, on the, on the high desert in Victorville, Apple Valley area, we have the fairgrounds, we can take horses there. That's so we'll, good to know. So we'll make sure we have some spots we can take them. But as we talked about last week, you have to be ready. You have to have a plan because there's just, there's not enough people out there to do everything that has to be done when we evacuate. And the thing is, uh, like you were saying before, what you say is ready, set, go. And you guys, be Girl Scouts. You know, don't wait to the last blooming second when they're telling you to get out of your house and go, oh, gee, what do I do, you know, and look like a deer in the headlight. Can you better be, plan now. Can we be Boy Scouts instead of Girl Scouts? Yes, you could be a Boy Scout, too, if you that's would a like good, to. That's a yes. good clarification there. Yes. And, but, but, but that's, and that's what we're really trying to stress to folks is take 10 minutes. Take 15 minutes a month. Walk through your house, figure out, okay, do I have a disaster kit? Do I have an evacuation plan? Do we have a place for our family to meet up at? Take those few minutes ahead of time, and it will save you so much heartache and time down the road when it actually comes to evacuating. We talked mm -hmm. last week, what happens when, worst case scenario in an evacuation, sheriff's department, search and rescue, someone from law enforcement is coming to your neighborhood, and they're literally telling you, get out, get out, get out now because the fire is coming down the street. You're not going to remember things. You're not going to remember no. what to go get. But if you're ready, you grab your personal go kit. You grab your important documents you have put together. You walk out the door. You and your family survive. And I had an idea about this. I'll tell you the when I was talking to you about the different things I was thinking about. What everybody should do thinking about it because right now the water supply is down to nothing. And they keep on telling us, you know, don't use water, this, that, and, and what have you. So don't think that you can be one of them guys with your garden house spraying down your house thinking you're going to save your house. Forget about it, right? And then, as you say, people panic. All of us do. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just a natural a, a, a reaction. reaction, right? All right, so what about this? Like in the back of my car, I have a cat, right? If you all would listen to Zach... He is from the San Bernardino County Fire Department. This man knows what he's talking about, right? If you get all your bags ready now, put them in your vehicle now. And maybe, like you said, every certain days or something, go through the bag. And like the extra food that you are going to bring, make sure nothing is going to rot. Like you can't bring salami and, uh, <laughs> you know, mozzarella for, for a, a sub or something. You know, things that are in your cans, your bag food, your water, everything that one needs for, what, three days, right? We used to teach three days. For a fire, three days works. But as, as you and I talk, we're going to talk about earthquakes in a few minutes, too. If it's for a fire, three days is a really good kit for you in your car. If it's an earthquake, you need to really look at seven to ten days. Seven to you, ten. You really need okay. to expand it out to that, that at least that minimum of a week. Mm -hmm. But but for a fire, if you're evacuating, realistically, if you take three days with you, you'll be just fine. And if you do it now, like Zach was saying, go through your home now. You know, and don't wait till that last second because you ain't going to have time, honey bunny. I'll tell you, when they say out, you better get out. Forget about it, right? And so, and let the children get involved on their little kit because it's going to be for them and they know what's in there. They're like the, their blankie, their teddy bear, the storybook, whatever it is, that they're going to feel comfortable and they're going to know that and, it's already there. And if you get the kids involved now, they'll take it seriously. You know, take take a few minutes on a Sunday afternoon and say, okay, let's let's all sit down, put our kit together, tell the kids what's important. What you know, as you said, the blanket, the, mm -hmm. the favorite stuffed toy. What let's face it, now with technology, the favorite iPad, whatever it may be, get them involved, kind of make a little bit of a game out of it, have some fun with it. They take it now as little kids, 
and they, they you continually reinforce that to them, they'll do that for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. They have a family and they have kids. They'll be prepared as well. Hey, Bev. Yes? Rich is informing me your kit might not be up to par. It's not. Ooh. i got to redo it. I told Zach last week. He, he's it, over here putting, you know, no, bad no, nothing the kid, over here. <laughs> no, the, the kid is in there. And, yeah, and, and last week when I was talking to Zach, I even said it on the program. i got to redo my kit. But I'll tell you one thing, boys and girls. It's not going to be this Sunday because of the Super Bowl. It will be on Monday. <laughs> Monday that kit is going to be pulled out and redone, yes. Well, here, here's the thing. If you're having a Super Bowl party and the disaster hits, at least you got all the food and the drinks from the Super Bowl party. Just take it and run. Take it, take it and run. Yes. Take it and run. We have, and, we have Mia Mocha on the phone, too. Okay. Hi, Mia. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? We're doing good. How are you, sweetie? I'm doing great. Getting ready for Super Bowl. You too, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, I know, you know, you, you're always out and about on Fridays in all different locations. One of these days we're going to switch, and, and you're going to be in here, and I'm going to be out there. You know, that'd be a crack up, wouldn't it? And that you, would. Yeah, you missed uh, talking to Bud Forrest. Uh, he's the creator and producer of In the Mood. That's going to be oh. on the California Theater Performing Arts on February 6th. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so I will talk to you about that later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then right now we're talking to Zach, and we are we going back on part one of the fires and getting our kits ready now. Nice. Okay. So you're all brought yeah. up to date. I am. Hi, Zach. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Keep going. Inform me. Well, uh, Bev and I, Bev, you and I talked to a few minutes ago. We had talked about. Can your kit work for both fire and earthquake? Mm-hmm. Yes, it can, particularly your vehicle kit. You know, you put it together. P- some people get stuck on that. Well, it's my fire kit. No, that's your survival kit. Bingo. You can use it for any disaster. Now, now one thing you talk, we want to talk about, about earthquakes, the, the one difference between fire and earthquake is everything you do prepared for fire is to be able to get out. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we talked about last week. You've got the garden hose on the roof. Get, leave. You can rebuild the home. You, you can buy more stuff. We cannot That's bring people true. back. That's why you have insurance. Right. Leave the garden hose, get out. That's why you have insurance. Move on. From the, earth, right. from the earthquake side of things, the, the benefit we have in California, and we joke with this about people that come in from out of state, they tell us, oh, I, I wouldn't want to be in an earthquake. I wouldn't want to be in an earthquake. I'll take a tornado. <laughs> and, and my response to them is, no, no, you need to understand, in an earthquake, your house falls down and stays on your property. In a tornado... Your house is three counties away, and you're chasing your shed two other counties down the road. Right. It's oh, you remember yeah. that movie, The Wizard of Oz, and that's the owls go. That's it. Yes. The movie <laughs> yep. That's that's what it was. And I went through one of those. Never. Oh, you did that? oh yeah. It was real freaky. That's when I was down south, down in Savannah, and uh-huh. one hit down there. Oh you know, yeah. And I won't tell you how, how many years ago it was because then I'll really tell my age. But I'll tell you. <laughs> That is one thing I wouldn't even wish on my wish on my worst enemy. You wow. wanted to, oh yeah, I mean, and I was looking around, waiting to see that witch come after me. You know, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the benefit is, you know, like you said with, with tornado, everything goes. We wouldn't want to do that. How do you supply for a tornado unless you're building underground? All your supplies go away too. Yep. The That's benefit right. we have in California is, even if your house falls over there, your supplies are still there on your property. Uh-huh. So so think about when you're putting your earthquake kit, t- kit together, seven to ten days, food, water. And the other benefit is if, you, if you're able to stay there at your house or stay on your property, you know, hey, camp in the front yard, camp in the backyard with a tent if you have to. You have a lot of supplies right in your house. You have mattresses. You have sheets. You have blankets, You have your clothing. You have your cleaning supplies. You have whatever food and water you have in the house. You have all that right there at your fingertips. You have tools if you need it out of your garage. You have everything without having to go find it. You so, know, Zach, can I say something, Oh, Zach? go ahead. By all means. As you're, as you're mentioning these things, I'm thinking about my neighbors because I could be prepared. They're not. And they're coming over trying to take what we got. So I think maybe it's a good idea to make sure everybody in your neighborhood has their supplies, too. And, and that, that's, what we re- that's really what we want to see people do is get together as a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Get 